first create a new project select integration services project and instead of naming it here what I'll do is I'll name it in the tree so I'll go to right click rename and I'm going to type in import CSV I'm also going to change the name of the package and make that import underscore CSV just so that there's a little bit of a distinction between the two. And rename the package as well, say yes. Next step is to go to project SSIS import and export wizard. Come down. SSIS import and export wizard. And here we're going to import a flat file source, which is another name for a text file, a CSV file. And here you want to be a little bit careful. when browsing because automatically the file name is set to a text file extension so what you're seeing here are all text files so oops I selected a text file that's not what I want let me go back drop down CSV files and there's the file I want so you can data import.csv and click on next and just this is what it looks like when it's going to be imported this is what the first step is going to be doing. We're going to use Windows Authentication in this instance so that we don't have to think about a username or password. Select the server that you're going to be importing into and also the database. In this case the database is test. Next. Here we want to edit the mappings. As you can see there are no columns mapped. Column 0 is going to be the first name. Column 1 is last name, column 2 is gender, column 3 is date of birth, column 4 U.S. state, column 5 siblings, and we ignore the PKID column that's already on the table that we're importing into. We're going to delete rows in the destination table, click next, and here's just a breakdown, number 5. It's giving us a warning that there may be truncation due to uh, the conversion from a text into an int. And now click run down and here it runs. We've got a message, which means that it's successfully ran. The message says basically that there's possible truncation, but in this instance there is no truncation. And here is the package created all by itself by a SQL Server and SSIS. The first step truncates your table and remove all the data. And the next is our data pump, and here we have our source data connection. And we can see the columns again. And our error output fail component. If there's any problems, our next step is the data conversion of column five, the text into an int data type. And last but not least, the actual pumping of data into our table called SQL Data Import. Here's our mapping that we did previously in the Import Export Wizard. And it gives us a warning truncation may occur, but in, our, in this example, that's not the case. So, we'll go into Management Studio, and we'll do a select star, and execute, and there's the data. And just so that you can see that uh, it's actually deleting the data and pumping it in, I'm going to run these tasks by themselves. So, first, execute task. This is a truncate table task. Do a select. There's nothing there. Select star. We'll Nothing there, everything's gone. And now we're going to do the data pump task. Click finish, we'll stop it. And we'll do a select star from the data input, and there's our data. Back again. And as you can see, the first column, PKID, is an identity column. 